Gravity and Simple Harmonic Motion, Review 9. The two oscillating systems shown have identical masses, spring constants, and amplitudes. M is the same, K is the same, and the amplitude is the same. Which system has more energy? That's going to be system 2, because for a given amplitude, this spring in number 2 is going to be stretched an additional amount because the equilibrium point for system two will have the spring already stretched some amount. So to make it reach the amplitude, it's gonna to have to be stretched yet more. There's gonna be more energy in system number two here. Which one is going to achieve a greater maximum speed? That's gonna be a tie. And there are a couple of things to convince us of that. One is that the equation that governed velocity for simple harmonic motion went like this. Opposite of the amplitude times omega times the sine of omega t plus phi. Now, the sine has a maximum value of 1, so that means that the maximum speed is the amplitude times omega, and omega is simply that expression right there. And K and M and A are the same for both of these systems. Therefore, the maximum speed will also be the same. The one that has the greater maximum elastic force is going to be system two because the spring is going to have that additional amount of stretch compared to system one. And which one will have the larger period? That is going to be a tie. We ran into the equation that omega was 2 pi divided by the period, and if omega is the same for both of these systems, because k and m are the same, then the period will be the same as well. If we increase the amplitude of the systems, what's going to happen to the period? It's going to remain the same. In fact, t and omega and the frequency, omega is the angular frequency, f is the frequency, they depend only on M and K, and we talked about that. The period and the frequency are related to that. So if we increase the amplitude, the period's gonna stay the same. The energy is gonna change, but the period will stay the same. What if we set up these systems on the moon? If we set these systems up on the moon, they'll stay the same because the period is related to the angular frequency. And if we take these systems to the moon, the spring constant is the same, the mass is the same, therefore the periods will be no different on the moon compared to on the Earth. What about the two variables that if changed would change the period? Well, obviously that is K and M. That will definitely change the period. Suppose we hook the mass onto the unstretched spring and drop the mass from rest in gravity. And we want to know the total distance that the mass is going to fall before the spring stops it. What law or principle should we employ here? We are going to employ conservation of energy. Let's see if we can demonstrate that. The initial energy, we're going to raise the mass to where the spring isn't stretched at all. So the initial energy is going to simply be the mass times g times however far it's going to fall, which we don't know. We're going to say that at the bottom of its path, that's going to be the reference line. So at the end, we're not going to have any gravitational potential energy anymore, and we won't have any kinetic because when it's at the very bottom, it will have a speed of zero, and so the only energy that we will have there is the elastic potential energy, which is equal to one-half K, and then the spring will have stretched a distance H. We're going to equate these, and if we equate those, that H goes away, that H goes away, and so the distance H is going to end up being 2mg over K. That's how far down it's going to fall before it starts coming back up. Let's show that Part M2 is dimensionally consistent. So do the units match here? H is in meters, right? The question is, is that equal to what's on this side? 
Over here, we've got mass, which is kilograms. G is the acceleration due to gravity, which is meters per second squared. And then the spring constant K is newtons per meter. Now, do those match up? Let's see, what is a Newton? From Newton's second law, we know that a Newton is the same thing as a kilogram meter per second squared. That's what a Newton is. How do we look now? Let's put our fraction sign in there finally. Kilograms cancels, meters cancels, second squared cancels. Look at that. Looks good. Smiley face. Number four. Derive an expression for the equilibrium stretch E of the spring. At equilibrium, we're going to have M times G pulling down. And at equilibrium, isn't it true that the upward force should equal that? To me, it looks like KE is going to equal MG. And let's see, what do we know here? That's one expression we could write for E. We could say, oh, it's mg over k, which is fine. If we wanted to, we could say, well, you see at the top of the screen, h is 2mg over k. So another way we could write e would be if it's one half of h, isn't it? Depending on what we're given in the problem, that would determine how we report our answer. And what's the angular frequency of the mass's motion? Well, angular frequency, this is a really important equation. K over M square rooted. That would be one way if they gave us the mass and they gave us the spring constant. If we want, we could substitute something else in here for K. If we're told what the equilibrium stretch is, we could modify this equation that I'm pointing at right now for K and put that in there. We could modify this equation up here for K and we could put that in there as well. So there are several other equations, one of which is in terms of E, one of which is in terms of H, that we could substitute in there. But the basic equation for angular frequency is always going to be that. That's always a good starting point.